who's constantly worrying about the future, about what might happen. Maybe there are better ways to do this. Uh, what if the worst case scenario happens and what if it becomes a reality? If that sounds like you, if you're there kind of being dragged forward all the time and you live in anxiety about what might happen or what is the best way to make what you want come to reality, this video is for you because I'm sharing four steps of how to come back into the present moment. There's a beautiful quote by Lao Tzu that goes something along the lines of if you live in the past then that is depression and if uh, you're anxious that means you're living in the future and if you're at peace then you're living in the present moment and today we are talking about how is it that we come into the present moment? How is it that we go from I have to control the future, I have to make sure everything is just right. Um, what if I make a wrong step? There are so many people that I work with that have this anxiety and I know for a fact that was me in the past. Like I needed to control my future, I needed to make sure everything was just right uh, so that I could predict the outcome. Now I want to get into the source of why that is, of one of the reasons that I've found this was most useful to the clients to just really understand why is it that my mind is doing that? Why do I have this fear and needing the, to control um, my future and to make sure that it's just right? The mind doesn't like what it can predict, right? If there's a threat, it wants to anticipate it. It wants to prepare for um, a, the worst case scenario. It wants to be in control. And that mostly comes from lack of trust in self. We don't think that we've got it. It's not so much about the circumstances of other or other people, although that is part of it, right? We try to control or we get upset when people don't do what we want. We get upset when they don't show up the way we want them to. And that is because we're trying to control our environment so that we know what to do. Because we feel that if it's not control and if shit hits the fan, that we're not gonna be able to handle, okay? So the first step is really, that's not one of the steps, but I just really want to emphasize the importance of building that self-trust within you, okay? Because if you don't trust yourself, if you don't believe that, okay, I've got this, I know I'm going to be able to handle this, even if it's things like, it's absolutely definitely most important to trust life, but even these things like, okay, God will take care of it, or um, life will take care of it, or whatever, but there's no that self-trust in like that ego doesn't get the validation of I've got it and I'm okay and I can figure this out. If you don't nurture that, there's always going to be that fear of what if I fall and there's no one to catch me. Okay, so let's get practical. There you are worrying about something that's going to happen. Your monkey mind, thinking mind goes into the worst case scenario. What if this happens? What if that happens? Um, how do we get out of that? So first of all, Step number one, go into something that is real. What is here right now? What is really here? Because the truth is, anything that we're worrying about, let's say the past, of, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or maybe that could have gone differently, it can't anymore. At this point, in the present moment, it really can't. And the same thing with the future. At this point, in the present moment, yes, you have some power where you can act a certain way, but all these things that you're worrying about, they're not actually happening right now. So step number one is really coming into what is real right now, okay? And that is bringing me to the second point, and that is uh, one-pointed focus. So the ways to do that, to get into what is real right now, that can be focusing on the breath, focusing on the body, right? The body is real, the body's always real. It's that anchor in the present moment because it's real here right now. What I find often very helpful for the people I work with is one-pointed focus. So if you take a, I, it's not a pen, but if you take a pen, right, you just focus on one point of it, on the tip of the pen. And not with judgment, like, why is this a weird shape? Why, why is it like that? I don't like this color. Just bring yourself back to the present moment of the one-pointed focus. Like, okay, it's just, there it is. That's how the shape is. There's a scratch here. There is just naming facts like it's a fact that this is the way it is the one-pointed focus you can look at a point in your room you can look at a plant a candle flame is really great uh, anything that gets you in here right now step number three so now that we kind of brought that monkey mind back into a grounded centered place i want you to ask yourself a very important question who is really speaking 
the truth is you weren't born like you were not born having anxiety or having depression you weren't born thinking what if i did something wrong five years ago or um what if my life will be complete hell in 20 years you weren't born with that this this was taught okay this was taught about parent from parents this was taught from early caregivers you were born here and you were born present so who is really talking what is it that you're afraid of and if i'm just thinking of a particular client because i want to give you guys practical examples so um this person was there thinking what if uh what if i get fired what if I'm not able to perform my job and then I get fired and then I can't find another job? And uh, what if I go homeless? And this this comes up a lot, by the way. Um, and who is really talking there? Whose fear is it really? Because again, we were born like confident. I can handle anything. Life Life is there for me. It's supporting me and I support myself. We were born with this innate confidence, innate power within us. But we believed other stories instead of our own. So who's really speaking? Is it your mother? Is it your father? Are there like your older siblings maybe when you were growing up? Who had that fear of it's all gonna go to hell, I have to like burn myself out, I have to perform at my best or else I'm gonna lose my job and then I'm gonna go homeless and then it's the end of the world and I'm gonna be all alone, I'm gonna die. So who is really speaking? And I really invite you guys to journal this. This is so important. Um, a completely different part of the brain gets activated when you actually write things down by hand, okay? Don't be lazy. Don't do it on the computer. Uh, you can speak it out. It's really good for the to vocalize these things because we've been taught so often not to. So speak it, but I also strongly encourage you guys to just write it down so you trap those thoughts on paper, okay? Because that's when your monkey mind can't really go back like, oh, that's not really what I meant because it's just there on paper and you're letting it out, okay? And you don't even have to reread this. Number four. Number four is fun and terrifying because number four, we're actually going into, can you prepare for the worst? It's really important to just Entertain that idea. Okay, well, is the worst case scenario okay? Can I handle the worst case scenario? Because so often, we don't even want to go in there. Like, we're pushing away the worst case scenario. Like, I, it's so bad, I don't even want to think about it. What if it happened? What if you did lose your job? Okay, is your mind prepared then? Okay, I lost my job. What do I do now? Do you have any action steps? Really, like a few, just so your mind is prepared of, oh, okay, we've got this. It's not worst case scenario, right? Uh, so many people have trouble having difficult conversations. And this is from my own life. I can totally relate to that, that I had a point in my life where I had to come out about something to a really close person in my life. And I was there like, oh my God, I, can't, I just can't do it. I can't even go into the possible scenario of what might happen. Just life is going to go to hell. And I was like, okay, can I allow myself to go into that thought? Like, there it is, I came out about something uh, important to me. I told this person the truth and um, they absolutely hate me and they reject me. Okay, what do I do then? What are my action steps? It may not happen. And yes, that is kind of going into the future, but there's that monkey mind part, that thinking mind that needs to know that it's okay. And just knowing that, you know, you're there for you and you've got this and you are holding your hand throughout this process. Even if the worst case scenario happens, I am prepared or I know what to do. We are safe. It's really just about cultivating that feeling of safety and I'm okay no matter what. Okay. And so those were the first steps, uh, the four steps. I want to add a really important note, just like I said about where is it that it comes from? All of this is really about getting comfortable with yourself because that anxiety, again, just like it is about the lack of self-trust, it's also about self-love. How is your self-care? Do you, like, is your cup full? Because if your cup is empty, if you do not um, care for yourself, if you do not take that time for those rituals that are important to you, some things that you really love doing, some silence, um, if you don't make time for all of these things, it's really hard to feel like I'm okay. It's really hard to be like, okay, I've got this. I trust myself. I'm safe. If you're not actually creating rituals around that, if you're not taking the time for yourself to feel safe, to give yourself that. So how can the outer world give this to you? So just to sum up, step number one, uh, what is real? So coming back to the right now. Number two, the one-pointed focus. Number three, 
who is this, whose story is this really? And number four, uh, prepare for the worst case scenario. Entertain, not even prepare, you don't need a, like a thorough action plan, but just entertain that idea of, okay, it will happen and can I still be okay with that? Let me know if you guys have any questions. I hope this was useful. Um, make sure to like the video to let me know whether this resonates with you guys or not. And also, what is it that you find that worked for you when you do experience that anxiety? What helps you? I would love to hear about it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.